Everything we're going to show today is available today to you, to download, to use. All the snippets, the, the small code um, snippet that I used will run on my laptop. Okay, So it's today, but before we talk about the future, let's talk about the past. How did we get here? So you all see you know, this, this uh, Margaret Hamilton standing next to, you, to the assembly code uh, that was used for Apollo uh, guidance uh, computers. So we have landed uh, aircrafts on the moon using assembly, but it's very difficult to, to write, very difficult to debug, to read. Nobody want to run it, you know, nobody want to code uh, assembly. And this is why we have OpenCL and CUDA. With one line of code, I can do 100 lines of assembly or whatever. And <clears throat> if you go to C or C++, now I can detect loops, I can see conditions, you know, there's an algorithm. I can actually see the algorithm going on. If I move to a higher level abstraction to Python, it's almost natural language, right? Uh, for each column, for each row, do this and that. And it doesn't stop there, right? People want to go even into higher level abstraction, to low code, to no code. And why not? I mean, today you have platforms. You can design beautiful web pages, um, retail, e-commerce store, um, very sophisticated games with no, not even a single line of code, right? You can just choose your character choose your, uh, I don't know, your scene or you purchase it, you place it on top, you design the, the moves and you have a great game. And the reason we're all doing this and everybody's going up the abstraction level and, okay, is productivity, okay? If I can do with one line of code of Python, whatever I can do with a thousand lines of, of assembly, it's pretty obvious why I want to be there because I can do more. But it's more than just me doing more, okay, or doing faster. It's, I can get more people to do that, right? It's easier to hire um, Python developers and assembly or CUDA developers. And it's not only the numbers, it's the persona, it's the expertise, right? These people in the lower abstraction assembly uh, expert. CUDA experts, what we call ninjas, some will, may argue even C++ are ninjas, okay? Are difficult to find, difficult to hire, Okay, and sometimes they're really expert on CUDA and not OpenCL or, or vice versa. And once we open up to higher level of abstraction, you attract more people, right, which are not necessarily developers, right? You get your scientists and entrepreneurs, right? They know the business, they know the science behind the product. They don't know how to code, but that's okay, right? So it makes a lot of sense for me to do that. The problem is, in many times, that you're going up the abstraction level, you're losing performance, okay? We all know, know this game. And the ninja gap, what we call, okay, is just getting bigger and bigger, okay? I mean, for many years, we used to have a guiding light, uh, a beacon, uh, a metric for uh, accelerating performance um, or compute power, which we call Moore's law, okay? So Gordon Moore, one of the Intel founders, uh, just, he predicted that you know, the number of transistors will be doubled every um, almost two years. Okay, now I've seen variations of this, uh, of this law, of this prediction to predict almost anything, right? But what we've seen recently, um, mainly with AI, is that the models, the complexity of the models is rapidly going in a much faster faith, uh, pace than what we are expected to deliver, okay, with silicon, right? And when your um, building block is a transformer, which is a huge block, okay, the demand for compute power is just skyrocketing. It's not something we can provide anymore with one monolithic uh, piece of silicon, okay? So the fastest way to actually deliver this performance, and by the way, um, this is AI, okay, but I have, you know, I can, I can bring the demand from HPC and other demands and other workloads, and the workloads are just getting more and more diverse, okay, and I can take these workloads and I can run them all and benchmark them on a CPU, and I'm going to get some performance because CPU can run anything, okay, but if I'm trying to run a very specialized workload, for example, 3D rendering, okay, the CPU, as powerful as it is, cannot compete with an architecture, with a, an accelerator that was built to accelerate exactly that, like a GPU, okay? <laughs> or let's say if you go to AI accelerator, okay, like Gaudi by Habana and, and many others in, in the market, it can only do 
two workloads, right? Like maybe only TensorFlow and PyTorch, but it will run it in a much higher efficiency or FPGA that you can basically move around. Um, so this is why we need an accelerator. This is the, the fastest way for us to deliver performance, okay? But the truth is that one accelerator is not enough. You usually, in order to cover the full range of applications, you need a CPU and an accelerator, right? What we call heterogeneous system. And we see heterogeneous systems, right? People are building ASIC-like accelerator all, all around. I just read the yes, last week, YouTube are coming up with their specialized uh, chip for video uh, acceleration, right? Everybody is coming up with their um, soft silicon solution, and Intel, which I represent, has lots of them, CPU, GPU, FPGA, you know, deep learning, wh whatever. So there's many of them, and it's not that we only have these blocks. We know how to combine them together to construct really, really large systems. Um, I need to say that, Oma, Oma. You know, we have lots of accelerators and we know how to connect them together. There was a, a nice video showing how we put together two Xeon Sapphire Rapids, our next generation, and six uh, Ponte Vecchio, our next GPUs together, to construct what we call Aurora. Okay, so it's 50,000 GPUs, 20,000 CPUs uh, together to provide two exascale, uh, I think exascale is 10 to the power of 18 flops. Okay, so it's really impressive. And I really don't care about that, right? If I'm a developer, <laughs> I don't care if you have their GPUs or CPU or FPGAs or whatever. I just want to take my code and throw it on the machine, right? I want it to work. And moreover, I want it to work on any machine, right? Because you know, the national labs in, in the US, they have a new generation once in a while. And the CPUs are coming from AMD or Intel, and the GPUs are coming from NVIDIA or AMD, and now from Intel too. So I, I don't want to recode. I don't want to you know, change my code all the time. It's obvious right, that I want the same code okay, to run everywhere. And you have, don't have to go that far to, to supercomputers to understand the, the need for software portability. Right? Think about everyday usage. I don't know. You watch Netflix on your widescreen TV when the cable is working. And then you take it to the living room on your tablet. And then you maybe take it to, to, on your phone. Right? You, you continue the movie on the phone on the train. Right? Sometimes this continuous experience means that you have to recode, recompile, rebuild for each one of these um, platforms and operating systems and so on. I want this code to run anywhere when, when possible, and this is what we're looking for, right? We want, we're looking for software portability. We, we're looking for software that could run on heterogeneous system, meaning on CPU and GPU and, and all of these accelerators that are just being invented uh, on a weekly basis. Hopefully, it will have open standard, open source, cross architecture, cross device, cross vendor, and this is exactly what we're getting with One API. Okay, One API is an industry effort to streamline uh, software stacks, okay, and to unify uh, libraries and, and tools and stuff. So there are already lots of. Uh, Partners, you can see here lots of university research, research uh, centers uh, and, and commercial uh, companies. I hope to get the Technion and the Ben Gurion University uh, soon. We're working on that. And they're all working you know, to help us uh, develop the spec, okay? uh, improve it. Okay? And as I said, it's all open. Just go to oneapi.io. You can see the spec. You can see the technical advisory board that we're having, and you can see there you know, representative from all, all around. And of course, Intel has its own implementation of one API. And as I said, it's, it's free, it's open source, it's open, open spec, and it's cross devices. So it means basically that whatever the application or the workload you're running and whatever is a system you're running on, okay, the software stack is unified and should work on all of these devices. Now, these libraries, the tools and languages are here for a long time, okay? Many of them are not new. You've seen them working on CPUs for ages, but now with one API, you can expect to have them working. You can expect the same experience on GPU, on FPGA, and other devices, okay? And you can get them separately, one by one, just download the component, or packed into a toolkit. For example, this is the base toolkit, and um, it has basically everything you need to, to get started, okay? Um, 
So I just want to show you one component of each of the categories here in the base toolkit. And um, let's go one by one. Each of these exa example, um, you know, I chose example to demonstrate how you can use the power of your even GPU without the need to really know, you know, too much, too lower level um, details about OpenCL or CUDA or whatever. Okay, so the first is what we call one DPL and it's cut on, on the, uh, it's not aligned, but it's basically um, a library that add heterogeneity to C++ STL library. Okay, we just heard from Briars Wright about the library. So the easiest way for me to explain it is to bring a, a simple code. Uh, so I just took a data, okay? I just took a data and I generate random numbers and you know, I just sort it. So far, nothing new, this is C++ 17. And now I'm gonna use policy, okay, to uh, execute the, the function. So I can use sequential uh, or parallel uh, policy and this sort function will run in parallel. So basically multi-threaded, you can see here uh, the, uh, my CPU and there's a peak in performance and my GPU is totally idle, okay? And now comes the magic, no need to recode or anything. All you have to do is to use a different policy. Okay, a policy, this is a pretty fine call, policy called data policy plus plus default, which will offload your heavier uh, task to the GPU. Okay, and when I run this, and this is running on my laptop GPU, integrated GPU, but it will run the same on any Intel GPU and hopefully on other GPUs. Um, and you, you can see the peak, the, my GPU is working. All this work is offloaded from the CPU to the GPU. Okay, so I think it's, Pretty cool from somebody who never actually programmed a, a, a GPU, okay? You have here the ability, and I use the one API base toolkit. I didn't change the code at, at all. I took the right libraries, and I used the right policy, and the same code is working on, uh, on, on my GPU or whatever. Uh, on, it can also work on FPGA and other supported devices, okay? The second thing I wanted to show you is the data parallel C++, which is basically a compiler, okay? So SQL is C++ and extensions for parallel and heterogeneous computing, okay? It's something that exists today and you can use and add pretty <coughs> easily in my mind to, to C++ code. And it basically, C++, uh, SQL adds to uh, C++ what's in my mind is missing for heterogeneous parallel computing, which is um, the notion of um, accelerators okay, the ability to control uh, disjoint memories that are all around, the ability to take, uh, to handle exception code that comes from devices and not only from the CPU and stuff like that, okay? So it's based on ISO C++. Yeah. One second, I think maybe this was my fault. You have a black screen here? Presentation, Presentation is what? Don't move. איפה, איפה, it's hot computer. Go figure. Nobody touched that. What's that? What's that? What's that? Escape. Okay. Presentation mode. Presentation mode. Yes. You want that? Okay, I know for single source, asynchronous, event-based programming. The, and, and like I said, there's a community driving it, okay? Many people uh, contributing. and there are lots of information and, and sources and code uh, example that you can see. Um, and basically the data parallel C++ compiler, and there are many others, okay? It's the Intel compiler. The Intel 
good old uh, compiler now based on LLVM that can compile your source code, your C code, but can also compile your device code and generate executable for the GPU, for the CPU, and for the interaction between them. And um, I just want to take five minutes to explain SQL in a nutshell. And I think in order to have uh, good heterogeneous uh, computing capabilities, you need three things. Okay, first you need to be able to discover the device and get some information, right? I want to know if my system has a CPU, GPU, two GPUs, FPGA, I don't know. I want to know what is connected, okay? Second, I want to know what's the status of these devices in real time. Are they utilized, okay? Maybe I want to know what's the temperature of the GPU and based on that, maybe in real time, even switch between the CPU to the GPU, okay? Second, I want to be able to control the device, right? I want to be able to dispatch code to the device, understand what's the status, and so on. And the third is, of course, I need to be, be able to um, exchange memory, okay, efficiently between the device and the host and, and all of them, okay? So the first one is the device discovery information, and here is a very simple piece of code, okay? You can see here the notion of platforms and the notion of devices, and I can just query, get info, give me, give me the info, uh, for the all the devices connected. If I run this on my laptop, I'm getting a CPU that is using OpenCL, and I'm getting a, a, a GPU that is running one API level zero, and, and, and so on. So I can see all the devices, and now I can choose the device I want, okay? So there are predefined selectors like, so, Makara? Okay, simply, uh, Zani, that's on me. No. I got it, yeah. Okay, so I'm getting the CPU, I'm getting the GPU, I can detect all of them. And now I can select, for example, a host selector, and I assign a queue to the selector. I can assign a different queue to the GPU selector, and I can choose whatever selector, okay, I want. For example, please give me a device that is, I don't know, manufactured by AMD and supports FP64, whatever, okay? Choose your, uh, your device in real time and where, wherever. Um, and now, device control, okay? So I have a queue uh, here, right? And I, the queue is assigned to a device. And now all I have to do is take the queue and submit the code. The code that you write here, and it's C++ simple code, can run on the CPU or the GPU or whatever you, that you want based on the selector that you put here. Okay, so it's the same C, uh, simple C++ code, or you can put here STL library that we, uh, I've showed you yesterday, and it's just, you know, the same code will run on the, C, the GPU or whatever. And the, the last thing is device, uh, cross-device, memory uh, management, and there are two ways, two main ways for SQL to do that. The first one is buffer. So I define a buffer, I call it A, and now inside the kernel, I need an accessor, okay? So I just access A from the device. Now this code is running on the GPU, but A and the accessor A are the same, it's just they're, they're working on, the devices are working on the same array, okay? I find uh, buffers to be pretty elegant, okay? and pretty easy to use, but if you already have, um, you know, code that is using uh, pointers and stuff, we also have unified shared memory you can use, and now instead of assigning a buffer, I can just use malloc. Now here I'm using malloc shared. Of course, there are multiple ways to assign, um, uh, to, to assign memory. I'm not getting into detail, but the simplest is that, you know, I malloc share, I have your data, and the same data, the same array, is visible also to the devices, to the accelerator, right? So basically, you know, it's all open, everybody knows, and what happens underneath is the runtime knows when to copy the actual data to the device and back, only per need, only when you need to optimize your performance. Um, okay, now I got my code in SQL, okay? So I did this effort to write it, to add the directive or whatever you call it, to C++, I get it in SQL, and it opens up lots of opportunities because now, depending, you know, I need to, of course, take the right uh, runtime, 
but you know, it can run on any GPU, any CPU. It can run on multiple GPUs, NVIDIA, um, you know, ARM, uh, multiple FPGAs, Xilinx, and, and more and more are being built. Okay, so by doing that, by adding these to C++, okay, you basically open up your code to run not only on the CPU, it can run now on multiple devices, okay? And we have lots of examples. Uh, you, you might ask, uh, you know, what about performance? What about, you know, in 30 minutes, it's all we can do. And I think you'll find online lots of uh, explanations and, and, and demos and uh, examples of how do we actually, you know, run SQL on multiple devices and sometimes to give in a CUDA code, okay, converted it automatically to C++ with SQL, okay, with a tool, we have a tool called the migration tool and SQLmatic is the open version, the open source version of it, okay. I tried it several times with no problems, uh, you know, it, Intel said that it will be do 90% of, of the work for you automatically, you generate lots of uh, error, you know, codes in, 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 the, in between, but, if, but basically you're going to get your code in C++, plus uh, SQL and you know, for example, I'm comparing here two files that are just, you know, converted. On the left, you see the CUDA. On the right, you see I'm calling the SQL libraries instead. I'm allocating the arrays in here. And here the actual kernel code is being, not yet. Okay, and here it's still the allocation of arrays. Okay, and you can see here uh, error description, okay. It's mostly about error code that is, does not match the CUDA and the SQL, okay? And now you can, and, and so on. So the code is readable. Again, you can find examples online. And, you know, for me it worked uh, well. Now, uh, lastly, okay, um, I wanted to show you a nice tool that can help you with the whole process of moving your C++ code to optimize and, and to SQL, okay? So Intel Advisor is, is a tool that I really, really like. It has quite a few um, sub-tools, okay? It can, for example, show you the f graph flow of your code, okay? It can uh, help you, you know, better uh, thread your code, better vectorize, and I want to show you uh, more specifically about the roofline analysis. I don't know if you've ever seen that. It's pretty cool. You got here uh, the roof line, which basically represents the maximum capacity, the maximum compute power of the machine, okay? And it will be, of course, different for every machine. And here you have uh, each one of these is one of your functions, okay? It has some uh, compute intensity and it has some bandwidth that it takes, okay? And, you know, the, this, is, this gap is something that you can fix, right? Because you're not maximizing the potential, you're not getting to the roof. Okay, and the tool also tells you which functions to focus on. Okay, for example, uh, this function is very far from the roof, so I would think that, you know, I better start here, but, you know, the, the tool tells me not, probably because this function is hardly used. Okay, it won't affect my uh, performance. Uh, this one maybe is also good, but, you know, I already optimize it. The tool doesn't see lots of room for optimization. He tells me go here, start here. Okay, so it's a nice tool to look over your C++ code, okay, whatever it is, and, you know, it can analyze it and give you lots of hints for, uh, to improve the performance. And the last uh, I wanted to show you is the offload advisor. So the offload adv advisor basically helps you take your existing C++ code and tells you take this portion and offload it to the GPU, okay? And you can tell him, you know, which GPU you can choose from a, pretty large uh, list of, of GPUs and you, and you can tell him, hey, you run on this GPU, tell me what you think, okay? And here, for example, I run it on Gen 11 GT2, whatever, it's integrated graphic, I think, okay? And the tool found me uh, three functions, you can see them here, which he thinks I can improve. And uh, he, th he said that if I'll do what he says, these three functions will run 5x faster, which will improve my overall performance of the whole program by 70%, okay? So it's a pretty powerful tool. Again, part of the One API, uh, part of the base toolkit. You can run it from the IDE, you can run it standalone, but it's pretty cool. 
Okay, so uh, to summarize, I have no clue what, how much time we have yet or don't have. Um, I think the fastest way to open your code to, you know, to multiple devices by multiple uh, vendors is by adding SQL uh, to your C++ code. And uh, we are here to help you. Um, there are links. You can just open oneapi.io. Lots of resource here. And since I have no shame, I'm promoting my YouTube channel. Um, you can just scan or go to YouTube and type one API. Um, you know, every like is, uh, every view is, uh, accept is uh, acceptable. I pair per view, yes, I pair per click. Okay, guys, if you have any questions, you know, Yair and myself, you can find us on LinkedIn. Uh, we'll be happy to share, you know, lots of information. We got Jupyter notebooks, endless. You can connect to the Intel Dev Cloud to work remotely, uh, you know, free of charge, of course. I don't know, I said that everything is free, yes. Uh, and, you know, and just get, get going. We got uh, notebooks to get started, we got uh, lots of materials, uh, yes. So there's, there, you know, we, we just started. There's one, there's one example, uh, and I'm going to upload this uh, example soon to the, to YouTube, which uh, not us, called Codeplay. I don't know if you heard about them. They're based in Scotland. They took uh, an end body simulation, ported it to. I, I did the same. I tried it. There, it's open in YouTube, in uh, in GitHub. Just you GitHub uh, end body simulation, and you, uh, they took the CUDA code, they ran it on. RTX 380, whatever, and then they ported it to SQL automatically, and they run it on the CPU, they run it on Intel GPU, and then they, run, they ran the same code, the same SQL code on NVIDIA GPU, and it even ran faster. It's not going to happen all the time, but, but yeah, there are some examples that SQL is even faster than, than uh, CUDA. Okay, now the, the real target to today f for us is not to to make sure everything is faster. First of all, let's make it portable, okay? Which is an advantage by itself, right? Think about your code running in the cloud, okay? And, you know, startups just sometimes have a great idea. They want to start coding. Now they're at the junction when they have to decide if they code for CPU, for GPU, for NVIDIA, for AMD, whatever. Now each of these decisions basically blocks other decisions. You cannot do everything, right? And here, okay, we offer them, uh, uh, the option to basically code it with SQL and then you can run it on FPGAs, right, on, on CPUs, on GPUs. I think it's pretty cool um, and we have all the tools to support it. Okay, thank you very much guys. <laughs>